Hi everybody and welcome to the Plant Stock channel. Today you're here as always with Mayur and me, Jesse. And today we have a special video. Uh, just recently, Mayur put out a tweet talking about the overall bear market and where we're at right now, comparing it to basically around 2000, about 22 years ago, and the whole dot-com bubble and what that led to. And are we actually reaching a bottom soon? And after that, I thought we'll talk about Kathy Woods from ARK Invest because she actually retweeted this that Mayor had put out there. So we're going to talk a little about Kathy Woods as well. So let's get to it. All right. Yeah. So everyone is talking about this, right? Everyone that's been in the markets is wondering where the bottom is going to be. Uh, this has been one of the most spectacular uh, declines, uh, especially for growth stocks, right? Um, including our plant stocks, but really all across the board, right? So everyone's questioning where the bottom is. Um, and, you know, like I've been saying in prior videos, this has been one hell of a time where stocks traded at 10, 20, 30, 50 times revenue. And we haven't seen that in 20 years, right? So, you know, comparisons are drawn to the bubble popping in the year 2000. So, you know, I put out a tweet that basically looked at how many companies actually trade at a discount to cash, to net cash, right? So we'll get into the calculation in a bit, but I just put it out there as just uh, an afterthought idea as I was, uh, you know, um, you know, playing with my toddler. I just took him out to the store and we were just, you know, doing our usual thing. And I just kind of had this idea pop in my head. So after I came back, I, I used our software. Um, so, you know, again, full disclosure, this is uh, nothing is financial advice. Um, so don't take that, you know, as, as advice of any kind. Uh, it's just ideas that were just bouncing out there. Um, but uh, I used our software um, by, you know, my employer, Zach's Investment Research, and put together a study that looked at um, how many stocks trade you know, their market caps trade at below their liquidation value. Okay, so this is a very strict definition. And I was shocked to see that the number of companies that, you know, satisfy that criteria are basically at the highs of the dot of the bottom of the dot com crash, not during the, the, the dot com crash or the top of the dot com crash, but at the bottom of the crash. So you can see on the chart here, and I'll, I'll blow it up a little bit more in just a second, but I saw that it's basically matched, almost matched the all-time high, just short of that by a little bit. Uh, but we've already exceeded, uh, you know, the, the bottom of the 2008-2009 Great Recession. That was a great financial crisis that we had that spilled over into the entire banking system. So we're actually beyond that at this point now. Um, so this to me is one of many indications that we may be close to a bottoming out of the market. I don't think it's necessarily in yet. I do think that there's still further downside to go, but um, we're getting close based on this measure of what the bottom of a bear market truly looks like. And not just any bear market, but at the bottom of, you know, when, you know, we are exiting a bubble market. And I think at this point, everybody agrees that we were in a bubble market in 2000, 2000, uh, in the year 2020 and 2021. But I just put this out there and suddenly Kathy actually, you know, catches wind of it. I didn't even tag her or anything. I didn't tag anybody. In fact, um, I didn't even tag any, uh, I didn't put any cash tag on there either. No market hashtag or anything. So somehow, uh, it just popped up on her radar. And she retweeted it, uh, saying thank you to me. And, you know, she added her own commentary where, you know, she's like stocks sold off of the te tech and te uh, telecom bubble because the dream would not become reality for 20 to 25 years. However, genomic sequencing, adapt adaptive robotics, energy storage, AI, and blockchain technologies are realities. And their stocks uh, seemingly in deep value territory. So... I definitely agree with her on on many things, um, even this one. Um, so that was awesome that that uh, that you know this idea, this tweet got retweeted by her. Yeah, definitely. So, so you know, what does this mean, right? Let's let's get into what I mean by companies trading at a discount to net cash. Here's the calculation. All it is is fully diluted market cap 
Okay, so that's the diluted mar uh, shares outstanding that you know every company reports on their income statement every single quarter times the price, right? That gives us the fully diluted, diluted market cap divided by cash and equivalents on the balance sheet minus total liabilities, the entire liability section. This ratio has to be less than one, right? Or you can state it differently and say that cash and equivalents minus total liabilities. Um, and actually this is a typo here. I should have said greater than not less than. So that is a typo there. So this should be greater than fully diluted market cap. So what does all of this mean? It just means that any company that satisfies this ratio is basically telling you that the market cap is less than what the company would have left over if they decided, all right, you know what, we're, we're done. We don't want to deal with this anymore. We're shutting down. Everybody is laid off. We're selling all of our assets, or even if they don't sell any assets, everybody's laid off. Uh, we're just going to pay off all of our liabilities and just distribute the re remaining cash to our shareholders. So after you pay everything back that you owe, the amount that's left is still greater than the market cap trading on the active market today. Wow. That means that the market cap is below what the company is worth if they were to just liquidate everything. Do you, do you have some, do you have some examples of companies uh, that uh, we know of? Um, actually, there's uh, funny you mentioned. Uh, there's one. Uh, it's called Laird Foods, and it's actually a plant stock, by the way. <laughs> um, so they make uh, these really nice, um, you know, plant-based coffee creamers and things like that. Um, and I've had it before. It's really good. I like it a lot. So Laird is one of them, L-A-I-R-D. It's a very small company. So uh, just as a caveat to all this, this is we're not talking, you know, Google, Microsoft, these companies are not going to be in this list, right? They're not going to trade at a discount in net cash. That would be insane if that happened. Um, they're mostly small, you know, companies, right? But the reason why it's relevant um, to analyze where we are in the cycle of a bear market is this chart right here, because you can see that over time, this number goes up and down, but the peaks happen to coincide with when you're near a bottom in the market. So you can see here that during the dot com, this, the, the height of the dot com boom, right, which was in 1999 and it peaked out in 2000. You can see that the number of companies trading at a discount to net cash was very low, right? It actually started to move up, you know, in the mid, you know, mid 2000s, right? Mid, basically May to June of 2000. But that number really took off you know, as we enter 2002. And remember late 2002 was the actual bottoming of the market. So uh, there's nothing magical about this number 200, um, but it just happens to be that that was the number of companies that, you know, started to trade at a discount to cash out of the overall stock market. Okay, so this, whenever this number peaks out, um, that coincides with the market bottom. So if you were to start buying stocks, um, in 2002, you would make an incredible return over the next 10 years. Now, obviously we had a huge hit to the market in, in 2008. So that's a little bit of a different story, but you can see that that number peaked in, you know, at the bottom of the market in 2009. So you can see that right there when this, you know, crossed the 150 threshold, that would have been a phenomenal time to be buying the market right now. So th these are companies that are mostly micro cap. So they're not S and P 500 members, most of them, right? But they give you an idea because remember, small cap stocks are the ones that get hit the hardest during recessions yeah. um, and during, you know, bubble bubbles getting burst, right? So what small caps do during this time is indicative of the broader market in, in my view, because you can see the evidence right here that when this number peaks out, that's usually very, very close to a market bottom. And now look at where we are at today. We've actually surpassed the highs of the bottom of the market in the dot com crash. So again, this is in raw number of companies. So this is not directly comparable because there's, you know, the number of companies that trade in the US exchanges has gone up over time, right? 
So 200 stocks in 2002 could be a lot less than 200 stocks today, right? So that's why I went ahead and took the next step and looked at the number of companies that traded at a discount and at cash as a percentage of the total stock universe, right? So this, you can see that again, even as a percentage of all companies out there, we're still at a very, very, you know, we're very at a near uh, sort of peak. It got almost to 3.5% at the bottom of the, of the great dot com crash. It got up to about 2.6% at the bottom of the great financial crisis. And we're now, you know, basically at 3% today. So take this for what you will. Um, you know, could we take out, there's no rule that says you can't go above 3.5%, right? So could it take that number out? Sure, it could. But if history is any precedent, you know, this is getting close to, um, you know, where we bottomed in the market the last two times. So that's that's all I wanted to put it put it out there. Could it get to four percent? Sure. Could it get to ten percent? That would be crazy, but sure. Uh, there's no rule that there's no circuit breaker that you know halts the market just because of this number going up. But you know everybody likes to compare today's market to what happened in 2000, 2002. and if you were to do that, then you can see that you know here we now see almost three percent of all companies in the entire US market, basically all companies that trade on US exchanges, 3% of all of those companies are now trading at below their liquidation value. Yeah. But it's also important to remember then that when we had the dot com bubble, uh, obviously, a lot of those companies that we felt had a future that seemed really positive and disruptive, uh, they actually went under, right? They never really got anywhere. But we had a few ones, obviously, like Amazon. That was a great company that actually were first trading, I think, from 97 to 98 up to around $120. Then I think around the dot-com bubble, they flew down to around $5. Uh, and now, as we know, they've been up to around $4,000. And I'm not yes. sure if they've split before, but... Uh, but that tells you something. If you're if you're actually betting on the right horse and the right company, you can get incredible returns. Exactly. Yeah. So I would focus on revenue growth, right? That's what Amazon, you know, continued to show even during that, you know, dot com crash. So even though their stock price got flatlined, um, they continue to grow revenue even through all that time. Yeah. Even during the, the financial crisis in 2009, right? Everyone's revenue went down due to the recession. Amazon's was up. So, you know, if you can find companies that have gotten hit very hard, right? During this entire correction. Um, but if they have if they continue to show revenue growth yeah. this year and next year as well, um, if they are providing a product or service that adds value to society, yeah. Right. Added value to some individuals out there or some businesses out there. As long as they're creating value and they're growing revenue, the, this type of share price weakness historically has been the ultimate time to be buying those shares. Right. So what about uh, we're on this channel, we talk about all kinds of uh, stocks right now. We talk about Tesla. We talked uh, recently about Enphase, Invitae. We're going to talk about other companies too, but uh, historically we talked a lot about plant-based companies like Beyond Meat and Oatly, Tattoo Chef. Uh, and when looking at Kathy Wood, she usually talks about like really, you know, really disruptive companies, right? The company is going to change the world that has, it's a paradigm shift, right? Uh, so here I'm, she's talking about genomics, uh, robotics, energy, AI, blockchain, uh, we know she talks about EVs. And uh, so what about plant-based companies? I mean, a lot of us, we thought it would be, you know, something that would change in the last two uh, years when they started, you know, to become public, go public. But we see that they're really gone down now. What, do you see a future with them uh, from, a, from an ARK Invest perspective? I think so. I mean, there, there's, you know... In terms of plant-based meats, um, I think they will be successful in the long run. 
Um, but what we need is a spark, kind of a um, an inflection point or a moment where plant-based meats go mainstream, truly mainstream. Yeah. And I think that will happen uh, when you have major uh, international restaurant chains start to include plant-based foods on their menu. Yeah. And do at least a, you know, an on, at least put together an honest effort to market those products, mm-hmm. right? We don't want these products to be on the back of the menu or have, you know, be on a special menu. Sometimes restaurants have a special menu that they only bring out if you ask for it, right? Exactly. For us, you know, weird vegetarians and vegans out there. <laughs> um, if, it, if it's like that, then no, it, it won't succeed um, in my view, just, just my opinion. Mm-hmm. But if um, McDonald's, for example, rolls out the McPlant burger nationwide, internationally, everywhere, and yeah. they actually sh- put together an effort to talk about it and make it a, a, a you know visible, I think that's what's needed for plant-based meats to succeed. Yeah, plant-based milks, however, I think are already on that pathway to gaining mainstream adoption. Yeah, yeah, we still see about forty to fifty percent growth in Oakley. Uh, so they don't show any signs of really slowing down right now. So, yeah. uh, so uh, definitely a product that seems to be much more easily adaptable by society, uh, given yeah. that not only vegans, but people are lactose intolerant, people are knowledgeable about dairy product, uh, wanting something that tastes good and that they can use in their w- different cultural practices, being from India, using it in chai, uh using it in cereals uh and in cheeses and things like that so yeah but uh but before we end this uh so yeah it was really cool to see that uh, kathy mentioned you and uh and me personally on this channel and i think it's the same with you she's inspired me for many years and i really love the way she thinks about companies that are disruptive and that's why i think we're both heavily invested in tesla right as uh, so, uh, companies that are actually going to change the planet in so many ways, both for people and sustainability, uh, hopefully for animals as well. Uh, but as we know, there's been a lot of bad press the last half year to a year or so when ARK Invest has started to tumble more and more uh, several of their uh, funds, but also the companies that they keep talking about. So uh, should we make an effort to try to mute when we hear uh kathy was speaking or uh is there still a lot of things that you know it's basically a value when she's talking no so yeah it's it, there's a lot of um bad press on her lately because of the stock price coming down so much right so it's funny how you know it's always changes sentiment Right, she was the queen uh, when her, you know, her stock was up, and now she's like leading everybody off a cliff. Now that her stock is down, right? No, so I, I, I like her a lot. Um, I think her ideas are great. I think she is invested in the right, um, you know, concepts and themes. However, I do agree with some of the criticism, um, which is her buying companies that were clearly trading at you know, just, you know, skyrocket, you know, just extremely nosebleed uh, valuations. It's a lesson to be learned that it doesn't matter how good a company is. If you overpay for them, uh, your returns won't be that great. Yeah. So it's so I have two I sort of two criticisms of her. I love her ideas and I like the fact that she's picking disruptive innovation. Her focus is on innovation. I like how ARC is structured, where she has multiple analysts with different backgrounds all coming together to analyze companies in different ways, right? And that's different from the traditional Wall Street model, where one analyst with one background analyzes companies. I think the way that she's doing it is the right way. Her transparency is incredible. They open source their research. They publish all their thinking they hold webinars all the time. So it's a great idea generator and feedback loop that they've created. Um, and I like her companies too, by the way, like they're great company, the ignoring the stock prices, like let's just pretend every company was private, right? Um, she's got, you know, awesome companies in her portfolio. I think she's picking the right companies that are doing the right things. 
The problem uh, with her approach, though, is that she didn't pay attention to valuation. You know, like UiPath, for example, I've been looking at that company, Pat, the ticker is P-A-T-H. And I remember looking at them and I love what they do because they're, they're automating software to basically automate repetitive tasks that people perform at office places, right? And so they have incredible growth. But the stock was trading at, you know, 30 times revenue at one point. Um, I think, yeah, like around 20 to 30 times revenue. And that to me is a sign to be moving in the other way because it doesn't matter how great a company is. Amazon, as great of a company as they were, they never traded at 30 times revenue. Right. Apple disrupted the world. They didn't trade at 30 times revenue. So if the greatest disruptors never traded at those multiples when they were doing the disruption, why should, you know, UiPath, for example. So that's my thinking. Um, the other thing, too, that I wish she didn't do is I don't like her trading model. Um, so she sells her winners to buy losers. I think that sets up that sets her up her up for more failure than than success why yeah. because you have to be right a lot more often yeah. right um if you study warren buffett's career he he says it himself his entire career can be summed up to like somewhere between eight to twelve great trades that's it yeah. you know the greatest investor in in, in history he's made about eight good decisions in yeah. his life to get to his point yeah so let your winners do all of the compounding for you. That's the method that I would do. So if she simply held on to her Tesla and didn't sell it, those gains from Tesla probably would have outweighed the losses from everything else. Mm. Um, so her performance would have been much better. Um, so if she did that, if she at least was a little bit more opportunistic in when she sells the winners to buy losers, that would actually go a long way to improving her return. So I wish those two things were done a little bit more, but I still think that she's relevant. And I still think that ARC is going to outperform the NASDAQ over the next five years from today onwards, yeah. from this point onwards. Exactly. So that's my thoughts. All right. Great, guys. There you have it. And remember, folks, this was not financial advice, just two friends talking about stocks we're interested in and what's going on in the market. And if we are soon reaching a bottom, guys, and feel free to like this video and make sure that the algorithm helps us out. And feel free to subscribe to the channel as well and join our free Discord channel where you have access to me and Mayor on a daily basis. All right, guys, thank you for today. Thank you, Mayor, and peace out.